Hello and welcome to today's lesson on electromagnetic induction, which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to try to understand how EMF can be induced. So if we're successful and we learn in today's lesson, we can detail the definitions for Lenz's law and Faraday's law, understand how EMF can be induced in a conductor, and finally calculate the induced EMF in a conductor based on the rate of change of flux linkage. So in today's lesson, and we're going to cover the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, magnetic flux and flux linkage, which is part of the magnetic fields topic. Now, if we consider a conductor placed in a magnetic field, there's a magnetic force on the conductor if there's relative motion between the magnetic field and the conductor. Now, the relative motion could be the conductor moving, it could be the permanent magnet moving, or it could be both objects moving relative to each other. Now, whilst there's a magnetic force on the conductor, there's also an equal yet opposite force on the permanent magnet, but we're not going to consider this in this particular situation. Now, now, in this example, we'll consider the motion of the conductor to be out of the screen. So if we consider our conductor moving out of the board or out of the screen, okay, the force on the conductor is an accumulation of the individual forces on the electrons, the charged particles, moving through this conductor. Now, each electron in the conductor experiences its own magnetic force, and we can determine the direction of the magnetic force by the use of the left-hand rule. Now, it's important to note that the magnetic force will be acting in the particular direction shown on the screen, and therefore the magnetic force will cause the electrons to accumulate at one end of the conductor, because there'll be an accumulation at the one end where the magnetic force is acting upon, and there'll be a lack of electrons at the end it's not acting towards. So therefore, at one end of the conductor will have a positive charge, on the other end of the conductor will have a negative charge, as shown here. So what has happened? is in essence an electromotive force has been produced across the conductor. So we say there's an induced EMF in the conductor. Now an induced current flows in the conductor if this conductor has an induced EMF and is part of a complete circuit. So this is an important idea. This is what we call the generator effect and is how current is produced in power stations. Now the change in how many field lines or magnetic flux the conductor cuts per second determines determines the force experienced by the electrons in the conductor. So therefore, the change in the magnetic flux of the, con the, conduct of the conductor every second determines the value of the induced EMF of the conductor. Now remember, the magnetic flux linkage tells you the number of field lines a conductor cuts. So the change in magnetic flux linkage experienced by a conductor will determine the induced EMF. Now we can link these ideas together because we know flux linkage is equal to n thi, which is also equal to b a n cos theta. So now we can consider all these ideas and come up with a new equation, and that is induced EMF is equal to the change in flux linkage divided by the time. Now, that gives us our following symbol equation, delta n phi, or the change in flux linkage, divided by delta t, the change in time. So if we consider a conductor placed in a magnetic field, if there's relative motion between the conductor and the permanent magnet, uh, an EMF is induced in the conductor. Now, this shows that the induced EMF in a conductor is directly proportional to the rate of change in the magnetic flux linkage in the conductor. So as a result, we can write our equation as shown. Now, it's important to note that the number of turns it can be taken out of the change aspect of the equation as it doesn't change during this generator process. So therefore, we can actually move our de delta symbol on the top part of the equation next to the thi instead of the n, because as with the thi, the flux, which will be changing in this particular situation, not the number of turns in your conductor. Now we call this particular law, this particular equation, Faraday's law of induction. And this determines the magnitude of the induced EMF in a conductor. Now we can also display this information graphically. If we plot the flux linkage on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis, the gradient of this line would be the induced EMF. Now it's common for examination questions to present information in this format. Another graph we could draw is have the induced EMF on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis, and in this situation the area under the line of best fit is our flux linkage. Now again, it's very common 
common for examination questions to present information in this format. Now let's consider this equation applied to the real world. Now the most common example of this effect in the real world is a coil of wire rotating in the magnetic field. Now this is what we've considered as an earlier application in the course. Now as the wire rotates, the, the wire changes its magnetic flux linkage and therefore because there's a change in magnetic flux linkage it generates an induced EMF in the wire. Now when the wire is parallel to the field, zero, the induced EMF is the largest because whilst the magnetic flux linkage is very small, the change in magnetic flux linkage per second is very large. So for example, let's look at this data. Whilst the values of magnetic flux linkage are small, the change in values every second is quite large, giving us a large induced EMF. Now when the wire is perpendicular to the field, the induced EMF is the smallest, as whilst the magnetic flux linkage is very large in value, the change in magnetic flux linkage per second is small. So for example, let's look at this particular data here. Now whilst the values of magnetic flux linkage are large, the change in the values every second is very small, so it gives us a very small induced EMF. So for a rotating coil, the following graphs would be produced. Now you'll notice you get maximum EMF induced at these points on the graph because here the change in magnetic flux linkage is the largest so the induced EMF is the largest and you can tell that because the gradient is the highest value whilst the minimum EMF is found at these parts of the graph because here the change in magnetic flux linkage is the smallest so the EMF is the smallest and we know this because the gradient is the smallest value. Now it's interesting to note that when you look at the magnetic flux, flux linkage time graph and the induced EMF time graph you'll notice that they're 90 degrees out of phase with each other. The flux linkage leads the induced EMF because a change in flux linkage produces an induced EMF. Now we can link this to an orientation of this rotating coil. So, the maximum in EMF is when the coil is parallel to the magnetic field as there's the greatest change in magnetic flux linkage, whilst you get a minimum EMF when the coil is perpendicular to the magnetic field as there's the least change in magnetic flux linkage. Now we can further alter Faraday's law of induction to put some other values in to see how they link to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage. So as we know, uh, delta thi, which is the the change in flux cut is equal to the magnetic flux density times by area and we know area is equal to length times by distance but we also know that distance is equal to velocity times by time so therefore we can say delta thi is equal to b l v delta t so we can pop that into our equation and have NBLV delta T over delta T. The delta T's will cancel each other out and therefore we get another equation which says induced EMF is equal to NBLV. Now it's important to note that this equation is not given to you in your examination equation book. This equation is more of a common sense equation because consider the factors that would alter the rate of change of flux linkage. The amount of flux linkage which is determined by the flux density, the number of turns of the wire, the thickness, and the length of the conductor, and also the speed at which the field is changing, either the velocity of the conductor or the velocity of the permanent magnet. Now it's also important to note that in a length of wire or conducting rod, there's only going to be one term, so you can set your n value to be 1. Now it also indicates this equation that there's a directly proportional link between the speed of a conductor's motion motion V or the magnet's motion and the induced EMF. So therefore doubling the speed of rotation doubles the maximum EMF and half in the speed halves the maximum EMF. So what have we looked at in today's lesson? We should be able to understand Faraday's law. We understand that the magnitude of induced EMF is equal to the rate of change of flux linkage where E is equal to N delta thi over delta T. And we can look at applications such as a straight conductor moving in a magnetic field and consider the EMF induced in a coil rotation 
rotating uniformly in a magnetic field. So if we've been successful and learnt in today's lesson, we can detail the definitions of Lenz's law and Faraday's law, understand how EMF can be induced in a conductor, and calculate the induced EMF in a conductor based on the rate of change of flux linkage. I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on electromagnetic induction, which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson and have a lovely day.